Hi guys, this is the second part of the new Unity Board series where I will teach you how to create complete 3D game. Last time we have created just some basic movement with jumping, as you can see here. We are moving constantly forward, we can strafe from left to right and jump. So if you didn't see that video, feel free to check it out. Today I will teach you how to create some collectible coins with score and high score and also those uh, objects that we need to avoid, otherwise they will damage the player. Let's get started! So we will start by creating the obstacles. We can easily right click, 3D object and select for example the cube or you can import your own models. I will create new materials that I can make this uh, obstacle for example red. So create and here we have material. So this can be spike or something like this. I will make it red. And you can also play around with the metallic smoothness and all that stuff. Put it to the cube. Now I will try to put it down to ground so it looks kind of uh, like some spike or some obstacle. So we can rotate the object and put it into ground. Yeah, this should be okay for some basic spike. Because I'm gonna be adding a lot more of them to this scene, I will create prefab from this spike. I will also name it spike. Make sure that you have uh, the collider on it because we need to detect if the player is colliding with the spike. But the collider is here from the beginning. Uh, because we need to detect if the player is colliding with the spike, uh, we need somehow to know if it is the spike. Uh, for this, we can use tags. You can see them right here. For each object, you can set different tag. So I will add a new tag and this will be spike. That way, when a player collides with some object, I can ask if the object has tag spike and if it has this tag, then we will decrease the player's health. So select the tag and now we can create prefab. Just drag the object from the scene to the project like this and we can put it to the folder prefabs. Now I can easily drag the spike to the scene easily like this. I will also create empty game object where I will put all of those spikes like this. That's all for the scene. Now we will get into the code. And we can also see that the code is getting bigger. So if you want to make it more organized, you can hit left control left click and mark the code like this. So we need to detect if the player is colliding with the spike. We can easily do this by note on collision. And there's multiple types of collision. We obviously don't want to be using those 2D. And then there is uh, exit, stay and enter. Enter is triggered when we enter the collision, exit when we exit the collision and on collision stay is when those objects stay in the collision. So for this we need only the on collision enter. Uh, to the input we need to input which game object uh, collides with something. But because uh, we have the script right on the player and under the player we have the player capsule, we can leave here this and it will automatically take this collider. Uh, then we need to compare the tag. So we can see that one of those outputs is the collider that we have uh, collided with. From this, we can easily take the game object, just collider, game object we had. So we get the game object that we are colliding with. And from this, we can easily get tag. So game object, game object tag get. And now if this tag is equal to some string, which will be the tag, which is the spike. Make sure that you have written it correctly here. Yeah, spike and spike. So if the tag is equal to spike, I will then lower the player's HP. So if, and if this is true, I will also create new variable for the player health. And this will be application variable because I will need to access the player's health in the next levels. This can be type float, so just some number. I can set it to 100. 
So when we collide with some object and the tag is spike, I can then just set player health to player health minus, for example, 20. So subtract, get player health and minus 20. I will also debug log the player's health that it can show me in the console the player's health. So debug log. Yeah, you can see that when I'm hitting those spikes, the player's health is decreasing by 20. We could also increase the player's speed. So just increase it in the variable here, like this. Next, we'll make those pickable coins. So now we can create the coin. This will be the same as with the spike. Create new 3D object. This can be sphere. We will create the new tag. Set the tag. Also create new material. But here one thing that will be different is that we want to set the sphere collider of the coin to its trigger. This will make it that the player can just go through the coin. Because we don't want the player to stop at the coin, we want the player to go through the coin, pick up it, and then the coin can get destroyed. So uh, we will create the prefab from the coin, just drag it to the prefabs, and now I can easily drag it to the scene like this. So now we can get into the code and now because we have the coins collider on its trigger we are not going to be using the on collision because there is actually no collision happening we will be using the on trigger and it will be on trigger enter once more because we need to only trigger the node once pick up the coin and then destroy it and now we will do the same thing with the tech comparison. So we can just copy this part, uh, get the game object that we are now colliding with, get the tech if the tech is equal to coin. And if this is true, we want just to add some player score and destroy the coin. So I will create new variable for the player score, which can be int because uh, we are working only with whole numbers when it comes to the score. And when this is true, we can just set score to score plus one. And because when we pick up the coin, we want to destroy that it is no longer here, we will use the node destroy, game object that destroy. And to the object, we'll input the object that we have collided with, which is this object. We can also debug the player's score so we know which score we have. Yeah, you can see that it works as intended. It is adding the score and it also destroyed the coins, coins that I had here. You could see that those spikes are not working the best, the player might get stuck on them, but um, that's uh, why it would be better to add your own model of the spike that's like circular or something like this. Now we will make it that the player's score and health gets displayed somewhere on the screen. For this, we will right click in the hierarchy, go under the UI, and for the score we can just create some new text. We can use this text mesh pro and you will be asked to import the text mesh pro, which is just a better tool for creating text. Yeah, now we can see that uh, this big canvas got created. We can here switch to 2D so we can see it better. I can zoom out and this is basically just what the player will see on the screen. It is uh, better to set the canvas. Here you have the canvas scaler. So we can set it to scale with screen size, which will make it that on all devices, the game should look the best as it can. The canvas will just scale with the screen size. We can set the resolution 
so full HD like this and I like to set it to 0.5 that it tries to match the width and also the height. Uh, the text we can put it somewhere in the corner like this, type here score and we can also change the color. And there you can see that in the game we can see the score but now it won't display the score that we actually have. For this we will need to do some coding uh, because now we are working with the UI, the user interface, I will create new script UI and the script I will add it to the canvas which is the UI so here in the script we just need to get the score value and set it to this text for this, because we are using the text mesh pro, it is a bit different. We need to use node text mesh pro ugui text set, and you can see that it is the first one. In the input, we need to set of which text and to which volume. So for this, we will create new object variable, which will be the text. So this will be the score text. And this will be a type text mesh pro ugy this one and just assign the text you can easily drag this variable in connect it to the text and we want to be updating the text every single frame so we will be using update once more and the volume will be the score volume which is for example 10 and we also want to add the score text so it says score then for this we will need to connect two strings first will be the score and second will be the score volume so we will get the player score if you want to join two strings together we want to use concat string concat uh, we can use that one which has two arguments so the first string will be just score and the second will be the score volume but because the uh, player score is type integer we need to convert it to string this we can easily do by to string uh, int to string convert the integer to string like this now just connect the flow connect the text volume that we want to set it to and now it should display the score yeah when I collect the coin it is displaying the correct score we could make it the same with the health that we could just display health and the volume but for this I want to make it a bit more fancier so I will use slider which will just show the volume a bit better. So go under the canvas, hit UI and we will create slider. This will be health slider. Here you can try to change the volume. But uh, for this slider, I probably don't want to have this not here. So we can go under the handle slide area and here I have the handle. So I can just delete it like this. But now when I move the volume to the maximum volume, you can see that this isn't aligning with the slider as it should be. And when I put it to the minimum, it also isn't aligning. I will make the fill align with the fill area and then change the fill area to align with the slider like this and now when I select the slider I can easily change the volume and it will align as it should so we can obviously just put this slider somewhere like this you can also change the color for example the fill I want the fill to be red then I will go into the script and create new variable for the slider so this will be health slider type will be slider and just assign the slider because uh, our maximum health is 100 I will put the I will set the sliders mox volume to 100 and now what we want to do is just uh, set the slider volume to our health so for this we will be using the slider volume set 
and uh, it will be this health slider. We want to be setting it on update, so it is constantly updating. So on update, and the value will be just the player health. You could obviously just easily add uh, some text here that we know it is the health, but it should be should be good like this. <clears throat> yeah, so it is displaying the score and also the player's health, like you can see here. So this will be everything for this video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next part of this bold series. Bye!